Alrighty then. Bear with me as my voice feels horrible. It's also very freezing. But all that aside, this is called This Sleepover is a Gas by Lawzuk, if I'm pronouncing that right. Scootaloo groaned, consciousness flooding back into her. She turned her head, evading the bright beam of sunlight that rudely tore her from her peaceful slumber. Rubbing her eyes and blinking several times, she found herself staring up at the pale, bland yellow ceiling of Apple Bloom's room. Running a hoof through her dishevelled violet mane, she recalled her surroundings. It was a Sunday morning at the Apple family household, and the youngest of the farmers, her friend Apple Bloom, invited Sweetie Belle and herself over for a sleepover. Sure enough, to her left and right, her two friends slept peacefully in bed next to her. Such sleepovers were common for the trio of ambitious friends. However, the worst part about sleepovers, in Scootler's opinion, was waking up first. More often than not did she have the misfortune of being the first to end her slumber. She would have to wait an untold amount of time for her companions to arise, lest she has to awkwardly wake each one up. It was a dilemma, particularly challenging for the young filly, who oftentimes woke up in the morning with as much energy as a pot of fresh coffee. Groaning to herself, Scootaloo tossed onto her side, silently hoping she could once again be brought back to the realm of sleep, just to avoid this situation. The room was uncomfortably still, Peace and the cute Mac Crusaders were two things that didn't coexist normally. Scoot loose sighed, pulled up the bed sheets around her, and laid still. The silence of the room, barring the gentle breathing of the three fillies, was interrupted by a loud gurgle from Scoot loose stomach. She could physically feel her inner shift, and within those seconds of discomfort, a particularly loud grumble erupted from the slight pudge of the filly's belly. Of course, she had known her stomach to growl when she missed lunch or wasn't feeling well, but this was different. It was loud enough she feared it would wake her two friends, and it felt rather low in her abdomen to be far from her stomach itself. Any pony would know what it was, though few fillers would ever admit it. It was like a taboo. The courts in the back of the classroom would gladly do so even multiple times in the class, but the fillies? Oh no, <laughs> even the brash ones like Scoot Lou herself typically were more mature. It was such a pre prevalent concept that some young, naive cults actually believed the Phyllis just didn't do it. But at this moment, in Apple Bloom's bed, next to her two friends, Scootaloo had to fart. Badly. Scootaloo's eyes darted to her side, fixed on Apple Bloom. Slightly tense from the anticipation, she watched to make sure the farmer filly was fast asleep. Short enough, she was still out her chest gently rising and falling with each breath. Scootaloo frowned. She had secretly hoped the noise had a work in her friend so she could finally get up. To her, the wait had felt like hours, and long before this moment her usual air eagerness to tackle the day had returned. The Pegasus watched her friend for a moment, deep in thought about what to do. Despite her boredom, she didn't want to be rude and wake her friends by shaking them. Maybe a gentle whisper would do? Scootaloo quickly crossed the idea out of her mind, realising that her friends could sleep through a tornado. Perhaps she could get herself up, she figured. But then, what would she do? Her stomach growled again, this time significantly closer to Scootaloo's rear end. Scootaloo shuddered. The gas bubble felt massive inside of her bowels. There was no way she could let this one slip out somewhere, and no pony would notice. She let out an irritated sigh through her nostrils. Why now, of all times, did she need to do this? Suddenly, she remembered. Last night. You sure know how to make the best roasted cauliflower, complimented Scootaloo's Applejack spoon more of the cooked veggies onto her plate. Ah, oh, thanks, sugar cube. We get it all the way from my cousins in New Saddle. Scootaloo barely made eye contact with Applebloom's older sister as she listened. Her eyes were fixated on her new favourite dish, each firm white morsel dripping with oil and peppered with spices. You should tell them to send more! Scootaloo barked before chowing down on a delicious meal, inciting laughter from the others seated around the table. The Apple family sure was generous with their house guests, but Scootaloo suddenly regretted stuffing her face with the apparently gas inducing veggie. Scootaloo numbly watched Apple Bloom, silently hoping that by some miracle the filly would wake up. I should give her a whiff of what her family's cooking smells like after it's been eaten. 
the filly's ears perked up and she sat up in bed, surprised by this random thought. She must have been getting too bored, she reasoned. She would never consider something like that. Dashie would do it. She loves pranks. Scootaloo screwed her eyes shut, trying to force out these mischievous thoughts as if they were some foreign voice inside her head. Though with every second her mind dwelled on the idea, the more fun it seemed it would be. God, how could she think like this? Flatulence was just so... boyish. And although Scootley certainly wasn't the most gaily young mare, she at least had some standards above the rude and crude cults of her age. Regardless of her inhibitions, something about the idea seemed so overpoweringly thrilling, like a roller coaster or a scary movie. The idea of doing something so gross and so seldom thought of filled the filly with a sense of mischievous exhilaration. Besides, her friend probably wouldn't remark on it for too long, right? It was just one quick fart. Scootaloo couldn't help but giggle, even imagining the word excited her. There wasn't a more perfect way she could wake up her best friend. Gingerly, she began to ease herself out from underneath the thick, heavy sheets. She was giddy with anticipation. Apple Bloom was facing the ceiling, a perfect position for Scootaloo to place her rump down on. She slowly lifted her rump up and moved it a bit closer to Apple Bloom, cautiously stopping after each creak and squeak of the old springs in the mattress. Despite the slowing cautiousness, however, Scootaloo quickly found her flanks aimed at Apple Bloom's face. She blushed. How would her friend react if she were to wake up now? Staring at her fellow cute, cute Mac Crusader's blank orange flank, a third gaggle sounded off from her stomach. She could feel the gas pressing inside of her, eager to escape. It was hot. There was a <laughs> fucking hell. It was hot and there was <laughs> perceptible moistness, noticeable even from within her. Scootaloo halted for a moment, feeling sorry for the nasal torch that Apple Bloom was about to endure. What if she just found it gross and didn't forgive her? Was she really okay with just planting her behind on her friend's face? All these fears had little influence over her actions. She was fueled by passion for immature comedy, one that would make Rainbow Dash proud. And as such, despite the fact her heart quivered in the ribcage, Scootaloo sat down on Apple Bloom. Apple Bloom's muzzle was now nestled directly in between her friend's flanks, her vision entirely obstructed by Scootaloo's round, orange rump. Though her nose was not pressed directly against Scootaloo's rear, the gassy filly was certain that Apple Bloom's nostrils had a front seat to the oncoming storm. Finally able to make a noise, Scootaloo giggled loudly. Quickly, the sensation of furry weight on her face woke Apple Bloom up. She attempted to roll her head aside, only to find the side of her face was met by, unbeknownst to her in the sleepy days, Scooter Lou's butt. Confused, Apple Bloom's eyes fluttered open. Morning Bloom! Scoot Lou cried, draping her tail over Apple Bloom's mane. Apple Bloom took a deep breath, starting to become aware of her situation. Scoot? Apple Bloom replied. Her voice muffled by Scootaloo's fleshy posterior. What are you all doing? Get off of me! Whether or not Apple Bloom was aware of where her nose was located, she was about to find out, and Scootaloo giggled to herself. She tensed her stomach muscles and lifted their tail slightly. Soon, the gas she had been brewing in her innards all night was pressing up against their sphincter. In a state of mindless excitement, Scootaloo let it rip. A noisy, comical sounding exploded from Scootaloo. The noise moderate and stable at first before rising in pitch as it squeaked to a halt. The expulsion was especially lengthy. The wing pony's rump trumpeted for seconds longer than the average fart. The gust of flattest astonishing in volume. Scootaloo's fart brushed against Apple Bloom's face like a wet, hot cloud of dense air. Not unlike the clamour of a warm jungle. Mm, nice imagery. It was so strong as it rushed out of Scootaloo that Apple Bloom could feel the stream of air the ruffle the short fair in her face. Ah. Unfortunately for the helpless victim of Scootaloo's behind, the real torture came when Apple Bloom drew in a breath. <laughs> uh. The two girls were no strange to the aroma of a gassy outburst. 
whether it was the brassy wind from a cow on the Apple family farm or a pony who had just eaten a bit too much for lunch, they had experienced the misfortune of catching a whiff of these miasmas. But neither of the girls were prepared for Scootaloo's own brand. It was exceptionally rich. It seemed as though even the tiniest waft of the gas contained enough pure stench to clear an entire room. So it certainly didn't help that Scootaloo was like a walking bag of gas after that meal. The smell hit hard, eggy, rotten, and with the slight undertone of burning rubber. It could make a princess turn her head and gag. Scootaloo, get your butt off me now! Apple Bloom yelped, trying desperately to crane her neck away and escape the malodorous torrent her friend was showering her with. Scootaloo, on the other hand, was enjoying herself more than she'd like to admit. The sound of the Apple family feeling gagging under her hair filled her with a strange sense of joy. As gross as it was, it was fun! She had to admit, however, that she felt sympathetic as the smell reached her own nostrils. Even she had to stifle a gag. She snorted and giggled, surprised at how foul a stink her own innards could conjure. Call an exorcist. After an impressive several seconds, the deadly blast died down, hissing and squeaking. Scootaloo sighed, inhaling a lungful of her own gas. She felt a blissful sense of relief. The uncomfortable pressure she was struggling with finally released. Oh, 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 oh sweet Celestia, Scootaloo, get off! Apple Bloom cried in between bouts of gagging. She pressed her hooves into her friend's smelly rear and shoved her with all her strength, freeing her nose from the gas chamber before gulping in a breath of somewhat cleaner air. Scootaloo just rolled out over the bed, laughing hysterically. Among all this commotion, Sweetie Belle had woken up. Rather than a gentle coaxing by the sun or the blaring ring of an alarm clock, as was custom most days for a school filly, the sulfurous stink that hung in the room tore Sweetie from her rest. Before even looking around to find the source of it, she draped a hoof over her crinkled nose. Ew, girls, <coughs> what's that smell? She squeaked, half asleep, oblivious to the monstrous fart Scootaloo had just unleashed a few feet away from her. Did y'all just fart on my face? The southern accented filly asked as she pressed her pillow against her nose, fixing a disgusted glare at Scootaloo. Maybe? Scootaloo cooed, taking a break from a fit of a laughter to respond to Apple Bloom's inquiry. Her eyes met for Apple Bloom's, and she suddenly stopped. Quit glaring at me like that. It was just a fart. You farted? Sweetie cried, as in disbelief. It smells more like a skunk found its way in here. Yeah, Scoots, Apple Bloom continued. What if Applejack trots in here? Scootly paused for a moment before her face once again grew into an immature smile. Then I'd blame it on you, she snorted. You wouldn't dare. I should hog tie you and leave you out with the pigs for a few hours. See how you like the smell. Apple Bloom threatened. Would not. You're too chicken. Scootly rebutted, sticking her tongue out. Would too. You're the chicken. I'm not. R2. I'm not. R2. The childish argument escalated into a wrestling tournament. Apple Bloom lunged at Scootaloo. The once tiny bed was turned into a mess of wriggling bed sheets that left Sweetie Belle hanging on the edge of the mattress. Girl, stop! She cried. Surprisingly, the lump ceased moving. Sighing with relief, Sweetie Belle threw the covers off of the pair. Her face sunk in response at what she saw. Apple Bloom, her once uniform hair tangled of red, had her butt planted firmly on Scootaloo's face, who shot a begging glance at Sweetie from her position. Hey, Sweetie Belle, Apple Bloom spoke, sticking her hoof out to the unicorn filly. Pull my hoof.